Good day, YouTube, and welcome to another episode of the Albino Rhino Beer Review. Today you have the Rhino, and we're looking at a beer. Today's beer is from Ontario, and this beer really confused me for a few reasons. One, the label made me think it was Brimstone, where I used to do my festivals. So without showing you the whole label, and for those of you that don't know it, this was what I saw sitting on the shelf, right? And I'm looking at it going, when did Jason start sending beers to, uh, <sighs> sending beers out this way to Saskatchewan? And even, you'll see now, it's a coconut banana split. All right, coconut banana split. And even the stylistic font and everything reminded me of Brimstone. And then I saw it was from Silversmith and I was like, oh shit, this is from Niagara. And then I read the back and I saw that it was brewed at 75 Homer Avenue in Etobicoke. And I was like, oh yeah, Black Oak sold to Silversmith so that Silversmith could have a second brewery. And I was like, I thought for the most part they just kept a few of uh, Black Oak's recipes and that was it like I knew they kept the uh the pale ale I don't know why uh the tropical situation uh the 20 hazy years I, I guess 10 bitter years is played out at this point um but so they kept certain beers from the original brewery and started brewing other ones I don't know if they're doing like little one-offs or stuff I don't know but it was so interesting to find. And now we've talked for a long time, so let's get into this. Ah, uh, this is 16 IBU. It is 5.8% alcohol by volume. My, uh, there was a guy who did some beer reviews at my house with me, um, the Maple Rusky, and he went to Niagara College and all that. I know that he, for a little bit at least, had something to do with this brewery. Not going to say whether or not he still does, but it's it's interesting when you know uh, the brewing industry is a really interesting place because there's a lot of people in it, but at the same time, and, and even with a lot of people in it, there's a lot of movement. Like I know guys that have worked at uh, Innocente and Abe Herb and the Cayman Kettle and Brimstone and Grist and like it, it it's immensely interesting to see how many people move from place to place to place. Sometimes it's for more money, sometimes it's for more responsibility, sometimes it's for more experience, sometimes it's for everything combined. It's just weird that, that even though there is all these kids coming out of school every semester, like they, they do three semesters a year, and there's people graduating all the time from Niagara College, Yet you always seem to know somebody rotating through the breweries. This brew is a refreshing departure from the ordinary, matching traditional German Weizen yeast with modern American IPA hop intensity. Why? The Bavarian yeast strain brings out the classic banana and clove character you would expect. For the hops, we use the coconut and vanilla forward Sabro, supported with the delicate tropical melon of cashmere. Okay, so cashmere does sometimes give off melon, and we're talking like honeydew and stuff like that. Um, Sabro has been known to be able to do coconut and be able to do vanilla. There's a few other... Uh, there's a few other that can do coconut as well. However, when I pick up a coconut banana split, I'm expecting you to have had put coconut in it, not to have put Sabro hops in it. Because um, that would be like telling me, hey, here's our barrel-aged beer. We got the vanilla and coconut flavors with Sabro hops. Then it's not... It's like when Gayen Brewing, out of PEI, made their pumpkin beer, and their pumpkin beer had no pumpkin in it. It didn't, at the time, say pumpkin spice or anything. It was like, Gayen's pumpkin beer. 
and then you read the ingredients, and there's no pumpkin. We use pumpkin spice. Well, that's not fucking pumpkin beer, motherfucker. Um, hazy crazy, just kind of like what you would expect. Bright white head, it is fading and making little piles and all that. It looks, it looks the part of a wizen. It does. Scent. How much yeast was used in this to give off that much banana notes? Like, I know you can normally get, like, a banana bread scent off of, uh, you can usually get a banana bread scent off of a lot of uh, Wizens. However, this is more like full on like banana. This is this is like amoxicillin, liquefied amoxicillin. Uh, you know the banana flavored medicine you would get as a kid. That's what it smells like. It smells like amoxicillin. Not something I expected to smell in my beer, which kind of reminds me of the Wells banana bread beer. Because that kind of had a amoxicillin type of scent going with it. Cheers, let's try it. <sighs> okay. Do I think the entire concept of this beer is really interesting? Yes, I do. I really do think the concept, the construct, all that is really interesting. I really think that going, hey, let's make a banana split beer and not put any banana, a coconut banana split beer and not put any coconut, not put any vanilla, not put any banana in it and do everything with esters and, uh, and hop flavors. I think that's a really intriguing, really impressive ask. And they did it, I mean, can I say I'm drinking this going, oh, this, this tastes like a banana split? No. Can I say that the coconut banana split label really made me go, fuck, let's try this. Yes. So the label did its job. The label did what it was supposed to do. The beer as a construct, the way they made it, is really intriguing because, yes, you taste some banana. Yes, you taste some coconut. Very minimal. I don't know if it's if, if I'm truly picking it up or if my body is psychosomatically picking it up. But do I taste some coconut? Yes, very little. Uh, do I taste some vanilla? Yes, very little, fairly sweet. Do I taste banana? Yes, on the back end of the palate. What else is going on? There is a lot of hop bitterness. It's not overpowering. It's, mi it's mingled very well in the beer. It's very balanced, but it's sitting right on the back of the palate at this moment. I can still tell that I drank a hoppy beer. It's drinking rather nicely. It really is. It's going down smoothly, medium bodied. Um, like I said, not overly hoppy, but I. it talks about the hop intensity of an American. No, it doesn't have the hop intensity of an American IPA or anything like that. But like an American IPA, you know you're drinking hops. You know you're drinking a good deal of hops. Oh, excuse me, I don't know whose recipe this was. Whoever it was, did a very good job. I don't berate them, take anything away from them. They did a good job with this beer. Is it a beer that is my type of beer? Not really. However, at the same time, it is kind of my type of beer because this type of experimentation is my type of brewing. All that being said, I'm really intrigued with this beer. This beer has impressed me. Would I pay for it again? Well, I don't know what it goes for in Ontario, but here in Saskatchewan at Urban Cellars, it was $5.99 for the can. I wouldn't pay $6 for the can again. If I was, say, at the brewery and I could get a glass of it for $6, sure, I'd probably buy it again. But $6 for a can of it at... Uh, I mean, that doesn't sound like, it, it sounds stupid, right? It's like, oh, you'd pay six bucks for it at the brewery, but you wouldn't pay six bucks for it at the at the store? No, and the reason I wouldn't pay six bucks for it at the store is the brewery isn't making as much money on it. 
I would drink this again at the brewery. I would try this with a friend just to see what they thought about it, that type of thing. But would I go out of my way to find this again and buy this again? No. Is it a bad beer? No. It's a great beer. And it's a beer that you should try, especially if you want to see. Because we've talked about this, Chris and I, and almost everybody else that's been on the channel. We've talked about all the different flavors you can get from hops, and you can learn how to work with hops in a very interesting way. So it's a great beer to teach you what you can do with hops. So 6.75 out of 10. Cheers. Bye-bye. <sighs>